When I was a child growing up in the San Fernando Valley, the Los Angeles River was one of the few mysteries. I was raised in a suburb that was built into a grid. All the houses were at right angles, the streets were straight, and I would stare at the river's organic shaped banks and the immense concrete pillars and the monolithic freeway overpasses. It was all gray tones. I was on a bridge overlooking the river the day I got my first camera. The first photograph was of my bike on the back side of a fence with a no trespassing sign. While the river was fenced, I would stare off into the future from that bridge, knowing that the concrete banks of the river couldn't contain my dreams and my imagination. Someone asked me just yesterday, is there an LA river? It was a friend in New York on Facebook. Is there, is there really a river in LA? And, and my response was, yes, there is, but you need special glasses to see it. Los Angeles is a river basin. We have three major mountain ranges. We don't usually think of it as a river basin, but we have three major mountain ranges, and the river drains major portions of each of those three mountain ranges. Growing up and playing uh, in Bull Creek, which is one of the major tributaries to the LA River, and uh, was very upset that the uh, the public uh, wouldn't have access to it be because it was being fenced in and made a big concrete box. But yet if you go and look at some of the older news footage, you have uh, pictures of homes being washed off the banks in Burbank and Glendale. So something had to be done. Now there is a, a move to go back to nature and I wonder what's going to happen. We have three or four areas along the LA River that are natural bottom or natural sides. The Sepulveda Basin is one. Down near uh, Griffith Park, there's another area. Well, before I started working here, I thought the LA River was just another canal, dirty, polluted, trash, trashy, all that. I didn't really think, I didn't really think nothing much of the LA River. Like, it's just a, another sewer canal, that's it. Paving the LA River is deeply implicated in most of the problems that Los Angeles is so famous for. Severe environmental degradation, extreme social inequities, water imperialism. And then there's also, finally, the cultural problem, is that we have lost track of our river. We no longer understand that we live on a river. I probably have passed by a viewing point, but I've never really looked out and seen it before, I don't think. Back when I was about 10, 11 years old, 12 years old, where my friends and I, uh, Peel, Pee Wee, John, my brother Richard, we used to get on our bikes and kind of maneuver through the rail yards and play, I guess, a little bit of chicken with the rail cars and actually get to the other side, jump the fence, and actually ride our bikes along the corridor uh, to be along the river. And for us, we had our own little private beachfront, if you will. Uh, we had a, a little area in which there was this big pool area, and we could actually go in there. And because we were so young, we weren't aware of what the river was in terms of what it had inside. But to us, on a hot summer day in Los Angeles, when you couldn't get to the parks, it was like a great opportunity to go swimming. People who aren't aware of the LA River, or who, who only see it when they're driving over the highway, just sort of see the concrete in the distance, have this idea that the LA River is some ghost river, that it's not really that it's not really there, that it's just concrete filled in where a river used to be. And it really is a river. It functions as a river. There's, there's wildlife, there's water, it floods. It, it, it has all the characteristics of a river, but there are other things happening too. The river right here is the reason that Los Angeles exists. It runs all the way across San Fernando Valley from Canoga Park, all the way to the very northeast corner of Griffith Park, makes a little right turn right there and goes down across from Griffith and Elysian Park, comes along the east side of downtown where we are now, and into these very industrial, mostly low-income cities through South LA, and down and out into the ocean in Long Beach. It is the central artery of the major watershed that Los Angeles inhabits. Lewis McAdams calls this his 40-year art project. And in some ways that's not even a metaphor, because what is art? It's imagination. And one of the vital things we have to do, we have to reimagine it. You know, when I started Friends of Los Angeles River, I thought it was more just a question of turning people on to how the river could be better. But then I re began quickly to realize that people didn't even know there was a river. And one of the reasons that they didn't know there was a river, because the river had been literally disappearing from maps. 
So it would say flood control channel rather than river. I can't remember the year. This was a, it was the, going to be an El Nino winter. And the County Department of Public Works was using the El Nino winter effect and the possibility of flooding to basically wipe out all the vegetation in the river. It got to be a true battle. It got to be a battle where it ended up with me, not very far upstream from here, trying to stop one of the bulldozers that was bulldozing the vegetation. And it was an insane day. I mean, it was because they were bulldozing stuff and all the birds that they were, they were, had nests in the trees were like flying around and it was just squawking, looking crazed, or my projection, I felt certainly was crazed by it. And I just kept trying to get in front of the bulldozers to stop them. So Zev set up a meeting in his office that included Friends of the Los Angeles River and the County Department of Public Works, personified by the head of the Public Works, a guy named Harry Stone. Every time he would refer to the river as a flood control channel, I mean, he never referred to it as a river. I mean, you know, still when the county, even today, County Department of Public Works, most things they, they issue never refers to it as a river, but always as a flood control channel. It's the, this battle is still going on. Anyway, so every time Stone would say the flood control channel, I would interrupt him and say river. And he was getting more and more pissed off, and I was getting more and more pissed off. And you know, here were these two, I mean, I was probably younger than him by a few years, but he was with mean, these two middle-aged men, you know, and I'm mean, he's going, flood control channel, and I'm going, river, flood control channel, river, flood control channel, you know, and it was just absurd, but it was real and it was important because we were trying to establish, once you call it a river, there's many constituencies, there's many issues. If you call it a flood control channel, there's only one issue, which is flood control. And if you call it a flood control channel, the Corps of Engineers and the Army and the County Department of Public Works, that's what they do. They're, they do flood control. But if you call it a river, then, you know, the, the ducks walking up this path right now, I mean, they're, they're part of the river. The people that are walking their babies right now, they're, they're part of the river. The carp, which are in around now beginning their spawning season, they're part of the river. All this is part of the, the it's a river. I mean, it includes multitudes. My father introduced me to the living Los Angeles River. He grew up in New York City with a yearning for nature in his urban surroundings. He used to watch the birds at the LA River during his lunch hour. And when he died, my family put a bench at one of his favorite spots on the river in his honor. I've sat on the bench and I've watched the birds migrate in and out over the years. I've enjoyed watching people from all over the city walk by. The river has taught me many things. And when I get out of my car and I sit on the bench, I realize that the city of Los Angeles needs a lot more restful places to walk and sit down. In 1985, you have no one revitalizing the LA River. And by 2000, you've got over 100 million going into river revitalization. And every single possible person who could be involved with the river, you know, the feds, the, all the state agencies, the county department of public works, even the Army Corps, which actually comes on board a little bit later. The Army Corps of Engineers, I mean, this is extraordinary. And everybody saying, all the nonprofits, everybody's saying we have to revitalize the river. And the reason they do that is because they start to think about, well, in order, you know, if you revitalize the river, what that would do for Los Angeles. If there's one point I want to convey today, it's that revitalizing the river isn't even primarily about the river. It's about using it to grapple with the problems that we have in Los Angeles and to sort of create the future. When I called it a 40-year artwork, I vastly underestimated it. I learned to understand that it takes a lot longer to fix something than it does to screw it up. The only view most people have of the Los Angeles River is when they drive over a major bridge and they kind of look out the window and see like some of the concrete kind of off in, on, on the horizon. And it looks like it's a dry river. It doesn't look like much is going on there most of the time. But you have to get out of your car. You have to get down in the river. You need to go to the sections of it that are naturalized, which you know, may not be the easiest parts of the river to access. They may not be down, by downtown or by the big bridges, but there are whole sections of this river that are really uh, alive with life. Even the sections that appear to be dry, there's, there are big pipes underneath the concrete where there's massive flows of water moving uh, in a sort of a subterranean system under there. So it, it's there, it's just hidden in places. Why I like this particular spot is you don't have to walk very far to all of a sudden see a change in the landscape. The hills of Griffith Park, 
Um, you can see in the distance the Verdugo Mountains and really how high they are. And these are things that you don't necessarily notice when you're in a, in a dense area or you're in a neighborhood walking along. And you begin to understand the story of the watershed. The Army Corps of Engineers has told us uh, repeatedly that the LA River accomplishes the same change in slope in its 51 miles that the Mississippi accomplishes in 2200. That means that our mountains are very high and they're very close to the ocean so that when the snow melts and the rains come down, we've got super critical flows that come through the LA River Channel very, very fast. So when we talk about restoration and doing things like that, we have to get upstream detention in our watershed, which is largely paved over. So if we want to convince decision makers or developers and um, funders about that, we need to take them to places where they can really see that. And if we want to convince kids that they're part of a larger ecological system like a watershed, we need to take them to places like this so they can really see it. To me, the river is not only a symbol, but a real opportunity to create relief for the youngsters in the neighborhoods who don't have opportunities to go to the mountains or the beaches. And you have this natural element right at their doorstep that's been fenced off, it's been crowded by railroads, it's given a straight jacket with all the different freeways, and it's been mistreated for many, many decades. I lived next to the bridges, specifically at Main Street, for at least 15 years before I photographically noticed them. They were just something to drive over, um, something that the trains would block access. I saw that they were Art Deco and I thought they were kind of cool, but my photography was all about people. And uh, just one night it occurred to me, um, I want to photograph women wearing fashion on the bridge, something that matches the bridge, like a big ball gown or something like that. And for the first time I actually began to look at them seriously and I noticed that each bridge doesn't match. They all, let me rephrase that, they're all different but they all match. Even though one is um, modern, the 6th Street Bridge, one is Gothic, 4th Street Bridge, the 1st Street Bridge is more of um, classic Roman Italian with the uh, pylons. And they're all different, but they all match. They all go together. The, the river is as beautiful as you want it to be. Um, because I'm sure, you know, with a lot of the revitalization plans, they, they hate the concrete, they don't want the concrete, they want it 100% natural. So that's their opinion. I couldn't agree more, it'd be beautiful, but not to say I don't love it the way it is now. You know, there's nothing wrong with the way it is now visually and as a functioning living organism it's very interesting the way it is with its problems seems like people are, are making an effort to improve things and realize the river it, it is like a connector for a lot of communities you know, as far as the graffiti goes this is probably the low point all the graffiti gets painted over on the freeways and all that stuff but the river was always a place that was like you know it had little earmarks of what had happened in LA, you know, it's like um, a dialogue, you know, it's on the walls down there. Artwork that's out there for the average person to get bombarded with is just advertisements, 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 billboards, like crazy. Billboards, 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 everywhere. So, you know, like you're saying, I mean, like we're all saying with this, this community voice, you know, uh, a voice of people who don't necessarily have a voice that are getting bombarded, that want to kind of speak out, that's their way of doing it, the same way uh, a lot of companies are doing it. I definitely feel that a lot of the graffiti is just a, you know, a way to, you know, people, for, for people to kind of put their, their name out the same way Coca-Cola does, the same way Budweiser does, you know. That's the beauty of the river. There's always, there was always a tunnel that we maybe only traveled for a mile, and we could go three miles and find more stuff. That's our end result goal, is to continue the adventure of, of exploration. And that's exploration in the river, exploration in the city, exploration of the world, exploration of art. I think the river is fine the way it is. Uh, if they want to green it, more power to them. I don't see how that's possible. Um, I'm told that in one season's rain, there's enough water to take care of all of LA's water needs for a year, and it's just a shame 
that it all empties out into Long Beach within two or three hours. The river, despite the fact that nobody really knows either it's here or that all this stuff is going on, there's thousands of people on the ground now working on the river. It's arguably the most ambitious project right now going on in L.A. Oro Street is called a Green Street, first one in the city of Los Angeles. A Green Street uh, collects water. The water prior to this would run down the street, run into the river, carry all the cigarette butts, all the filth of the street would be carried directly into the river, pollute the river, and this is a no-no which uh, has to be stopped. Runoff is diverted into here. Under our feet here is a system of uh, cisterns where the water runs into this and, and then it's filtered, then soaks into the ground and then runs into the LA River. It's part of the watershed. There's a limited amount of water in the world and it's been filtered and reused, so I'm drinking the same water the dinosaurs were drinking. I wanted to show you this particular area because this is a creek. It doesn't look like a creek, but it actually is. There's an ongoing project of the city to restore the creek and it's next to an existing park, but the river has always been ignored. This, this part of the river wasn't seen as, as a valuable resource, but now the city's putting its money where its mouth is, and this parcel we're gonna walk by, actually owned by the city, by the Department of Recreation and Parks, and they used to store old tree stumps in it. And they've agreed to move the tree stump storage to uh, their larger facility next door so that we can now connect this creek restoration project to the river. And this is going to be one of the first examples of river revitalization um, that's resulted from the master plan in 2007. In order to revitalize the river, you have to green it, you have to clean it, you have to take out some concrete. To green it, you create a 51-mile greenway through the heart of Los Angeles. It's a logical backbone for a county-wide network of greenways and bikeways. To clean it, you really have to think quite holistically. You can't just take out the shopping carts. You can't just pluck them out and say, oh, it's clean. You really have to think about all this crap that's coming through the storm sewers and why is our everyday life and all these thousands of products that we use in our hair and in our houses and in our driveways and our lawns so toxic. You really have to think about green chemistry. All this stuff is ending up air, in the air and in the water in our bodies. We gotta quit pouring 80% of our water or more into the river. We need to capture our water where it falls. Okay, you can't take out concrete now because it would flood. You have to think about, let's see if we can manage our water differently. Instead of getting it all into the river as fast as possible, can we capture it where it falls using all kinds of infrastructural means, porous pavement, reorient the gutters, you know, retrofit all our infrastructure so that it captures water rather than gets rid of water. This is called Steelhead Park, and the premise is when the steelhead trout, when they swim up this far up the river, why, then we're a success. Northeast Trees was working along here, creating little mini parks, and suddenly there was a sign here for sale, and we came in and the, there had been a house here, it was a crack house, and it burned down. But it was just a bare piece of land, but covered with broken concrete. The neighbors were hostile because they thought it would invite the gangs in here. There would be wild parties, there would be drunkenness, there would be uh, problems. And so they wanted us to put up uh, extensive barbed wire, and that affected the design. And so if you look at the at the fencing around here, instead of putting up the barbed wire uh, th that they wanted us to do, we had our favorite artist and he designed fish out of steel that he mounted on top of the fence and they had their fins and one thing or another was your sharp points that does the same thing as barbed wire, only a little subtler. The park has grown up now and the neighbors have not complained since uh, we uh, uh, finished the park. We have more water in the river now than we've historically ever had year round and the reason for that is that most of the water in the river is actually released from a water reclamation plant up in the San Fernando Valley. The original premise was to get rid of it as quickly as possible. That was the premise then. Now the thing is, well wait a minute, that deprives us of, of our water supply. We have projects big and small, we have parks that are this big, almost literally. The biggest project on paper right now is probably the city of Los Angeles' master plan. The city of LA has 32 miles, the first 32 miles of the 51 miles. Since the master plan was adopted in 2007, the city has been able to attract about $6 million for uh, individual projects, $40 million in general for support, and that the $40 million really includes the Albion Dairy site, a six-acre site in downtown Los Angeles, 
and uh, to go toward the acquisition of the G2 parcel, which is really the jewel in the crown. Since 2001, the California State Parks has invested something like $100 million in the LA River, and notably it's the two projects, the El Rio de Los Angeles State Park and the future LA State Historic Park, the cornfield site. Essentially what I really love about this master plan is very much in the spirit of this is about Los Angeles. This isn't just about the river, even primarily about the river. So what they propose to green up the entire 32 miles and have a bikeway and have all kinds of nice features. And then they've chosen five sites where they want to do much bigger projects where they might take out some concrete or re-engineer the walls or make the, the bottom soft. The master plan has not, has not been joined by the county and the Corps of Engineers. You know, and, and until there is a Los Angeles River Authority, that's another, or some kind of an agency that has overall control of the river and not just for flood detention. You know, that, that will, until that exists, we'll never have the political control that is necessary. I've been volunteering with full our friends of the LA River, um, helping guide school groups. And we've done a number of trips out of Sepulveda Basin along the creek there. And I've had really great experiences with you know, third graders, fifth graders, bringing them out there and showing them uh, how, how the storm drains empty into a creek, how you know, pipes from buildings empty into this creek, and how the creek then leads in, into the river and how that connects into the ocean. And seeing light bulbs go in their head and the realization that the actions that they can take or even prevent in their schoolyards in terms of you know, picking up trash or you know, sweeping their driveway can affect what ends up down there is, is fascinating. When the kids first get there, they're like, look, look at all the trash. Who, who left all this stuff here? And when they realize that no one meant for it to get there, but it gets there on its own just kind of in terms of how water works and how cities work. Um, it's exciting because you know they walk away with a lesson that'll help them connect a lot of other things they're hearing about the environment, about cities, about you know being more green. And they understand that the things that they do will directly impact you know what's down there at the river the next time they go down to visit. This is where we play cricket. And this was our only awareness of this piece of green in the middle of Los Angeles. A couple of weeks back, we found out that uh, there's a wildlife group here that had some objection to us playing cricket there. And that there was a meeting set up this morning for us to come down and talk to them and see what their problems were. Now, we came down here this morning with uh, maybe a chip on our shoulder because we see, saw them as a threat to our playing cricket here. But very soon we realized that we are probably, uh, you know, we are on the same side, we are on the same team, so to speak. Uh, the group here is doing great work. They're actually cleaning up what looks like a, a trash-strewn uh, ditch, but is actually part of the drainage channel that goes and connects to a lake further down. There's about a dozen of us here today who are helping them, uh, helping all the volunteers here clean up, hoping that you know, when they see us not as a threat but as an ally to a larger cause that we share with them, which is to maintain and keep these open spaces for the whole city for their use, uh, that they'll see us in a better light and that we can work some sort of a compromise uh, together and we get to keep playing our cricket and they see us as an asset in their continuing uh, endeavors to uh, maintain this place. It was a shock to me. I, I didn't know of the existence of this creek. It's sort of well hidden from the banks. And to see it uh, you know, littered by plastic bags, CDs, packets of chips, and all sorts of refuse that you couldn't imagine in such a beautiful piece of nature, it was uh, pretty astonishing. The river can be this kind of engine for social, economic, environmental change because it's connected to so many different systems and it, it pulls in so many different people and different interests and different neighborhoods that when I look in the river, I see opportunity and I, I see a lot of excitement of what can happen in the near future. Now I see all the work Friends of the Los Angeles River has done. I see all the work that Friends of the Los Angeles River is doing. And I see all the work that needs to be done. And I know that we can't do it our, just by ourselves. You know, that we have to, I mean, part of the task is drawing in more and more allies and people that share the vision and share the commitment. 
and we need to create a different venue for our communities. What's going to happen in this metropolis 20, 30 years from now when we start thinking about how we store water? Where do we use our technology to actually create multiple purposes in one spot? Why can't we break out the cement? Why can't we create jobs today, just like they did during the Depression years? And in the process, lift that straight jacket, tear it away from the river, and let it become a natural corridor. Let's create a habitat that allows for the fish to come back. I know this can be a role model of how we can start changing river systems and inner cities. As I've been working on this documentary and watching the change of season at the river, I've noticed something every day that I didn't expect to see. Sometimes it's watching the sunlight hit the water, or it could be the birds, turtles, fish, or other wildlife. I'm often amazed by the architecture, the people, the artwork. For me, the river is one of the most exciting aspects of Los Angeles. The more I've learned about it, the more I'm hopeful that the river will be part of a better Los Angeles.